We welcome you to St. John's for worship, both here in the sanctuary or online. Join us today as we seek to be humble and honest before God. As COVID conditions improve, and as more and more of us are vaccinated, our congregation is taking gradual steps to reopen our building and to increase our in-person opportunities to worship and support each other together. At its October meeting, your council voted to remove the tape from the pews on the pulpit side of the sanctuary. For our members and friends who still feel the need to sit in a section that is clearly marked for social distancing, the tape will remain on the pews on the organ side of the sanctuary. Additionally, the front doors are now open so that we can enter the building either through Fritz Hall or through the front doors. Regardless of the way you come to the building, please remember to sign in. As, member, as always, we want our time together to be comfortable and safe for all members and friends. Next Sunday, October 30th, we will celebrate our heritage as Lutherans and our belief that God is always reforming the church. How will, you, how will God reform our own congregation in the days, months, and years to come? Please wear red for Reformation Sunday. As part of next Sunday's Reformation Sunday celebration, we will also have fellowship hour in Fritz Hall after worship. Come for good food, conversation, and an opportunity to support and care for one another. Also join us on All Saints Sunday on November 6th, as we remember members of our congregation and family and friends who have encouraged us in our faith. If you would like for a saint in your life to be listed in our bulletin on All Saints Day, please fill out and return today's bulletin insert. You can also go to this week's constant contact email where you'll find the insert attached there as well. Thanksgiving is soon to be here. You can help other families prepare for the holiday by bringing in brownie mix for Thanksgiving baskets given out to the Whitehall Food Bank. This distribution will begin on October 31st and continue through November. As our congregation, we are responsible for supplying 150 boxes of brownie mix. As of this morning, we have 38. Each fall, the Northern Light Mission District collects items for Christmas gifts given to various agencies. For this year's in-gathering, St. John's will be collecting for two agencies. For Gracedale, please bring in the type of items that you, would be useful for nursing home residents. For Kids Peace, please bring in chapstick and puzzle books. If getting ready for Thanksgiving feels early, think ahead still more to Christmas. Gift card order forms are now available on the table in Fritz Hall and attached to our weekly constant contact emails. You will find many different options for gift card purchases. You can use these gifts for yourself as gifts for family or friends or gifts for our giving tree. The proceeds from the sale of the gift cards will be used to purchase coats through community services for children and jeans and socks through the Lehigh County Conference of Churches. Please read the announcement sheet for other pertinent information for this week and for the next four weeks. You will also find messages from our stewardship team. Please reflect on them as we move through our building a culture of generosity stewardship appeal. Grateful that we are all children of a loving parent who listens to our prayers, whether they are shallow and self-centered or deep and honest. Grateful that God hears our prayers for healing, for reconciliation, 
Let us stand and greet one another in the peace of Christ. And now breathing deeply, let us settle into worship together as we listen to the prelude and let Mike's music bring us more closely into the presence of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love the world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ. He meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Christ, 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, our righteous judge, daily your mercy surprises us with everlasting forgiveness. Strengthen our hope in you and grant that all the peoples of the earth may find their glory in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. Although our inequities testify against us, act, O Lord, for your name's sake. Our apostates indeed are many, and we have sinned against you. O hope of Israel, its savior in time of trouble, why should you be like a stranger in the land, like a traveler turning aside for the night? Why should you be like someone confused, like a mighty warrior who cannot give up, give help? Yet you, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Do not forsake us. Thus shows, says the Lord concerning his people. Truly, they have loved to wander. They have not restrain, restra restrained their feet. Therefore, the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their inequity and punish their sins. Have you completely rejected Judah? Does your heart loathe Zion? Why have you struck us down so that there is no healing for us? We look for peace, but find no good. For a time of healing, but there is terror instead. We acknowledge our wickedness, O Lord, the inequity of our ancestors, for we have sinned against you. Do not spurn us for your name's sake. Do not dishonor your glorious throne. Remember, and do not break your covenant with us. Can any idols of the nations bring rain? Or can the heavens give showers? Is it not you, O Lord, our God? We set our hope on you. For it is with you who do all this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 84, verses 1 through 7, and we will read it responsibly. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul, My soul has, has a desire, desire and longing, longing for the, for the courts, courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those they who dwell in their house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose heart, hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those, Those who go through, through the balsam valley will find it a place of springs, springs for the early, early rains, rains have covered it with pools of water. water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will be seen in Zion. A reading from 2 Timothy. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day and not only to me, but also to all who have longed, longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to, support, to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, 
so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is a good example. On the one hand, we've got the best of the best, a Pharisee. He represents a group of people who are rightly honored for the faithful way they seek to keep God's commandments. And on the other hand, we've got one of the worst, a tax collector. He represents a group of people despised for collaborating with the Roman occupiers for collecting onerous taxes and for probably getting rich in the process. In a normal world, we would expect the Pharisees to get lots of approval and the tax collector to get hisses and boos from the crowd. In this story, however, a Jesus story, we should not expect normal. We should be ready for the expected to be turned upside down and inside out. Let's see what Jesus is up to when he compares these two characters and their prayers in our gospel lesson today. Please stand now for the reading of the gospel.
Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other, for all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. The introduction to this parable clearly tells us what Jesus has in mind. He's interested in shaking up people who trust in themselves, people who think they are righteous and so look down on others with contempt. And how does Jesus teach this lesson? He contrasts two short prayers, the prayer of our stereotypical perfect Pharisee and the prayer of a flawed, imperfect tax collector. First, let's listen in on the prayer of the Pharisee. I thank you, God, that I am not like other people. I do not steal or lie. I do not sleep around, and I am not like that repulsive tax collector. Besides that, I do everything I'm supposed to do and more. I fast, I tithe, I go by the rules. And then we listen to the short, simple prayer of the tax collector. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. After recounting the prayers of both the Pharisee and the tax collector, Jesus comes down on the side of the tax collector. Jesus says the tax collector goes home, his relationship with God restored. We aren't so sure about the Pharisee. Now let me ask you, in all honesty, do you think Jesus is being fair to the Pharisee? After all, the tax collector is a sinner. And he hasn't made any promises in his prayer to give up his questionable profession. Besides that, the Pharisee is actually telling the truth. He is a good person, and he does good things. So what's wrong with saying he's thankful that he doesn't have some of the problems that other people have? Haven't we all been known to say or to think the same kinds of things ourselves? I thank you, God, that I am not in trouble like those people who embezzle, steal, or sleep around. Thank you, God, that I'm not in a job that requires me to make ethical compromises. Thank you, God, that I'm not an addict or a person with mental health issues. Thank you, God, that I'm not like those with looming debts Thank you, God, that I don't bully people or gossip to get my way. Thank you, God, that I'm not like those people without faith or a sense of purpose, those people without a religious tradition. And by the way, thank you that I believe all the right things on all the issues of our day. And for all those other people with problems, I just have to say, but for the grace of God, there I go. But what's wrong with being thankful when we aren't troubled as other people can be troubled by life? 
We can also ask what's wrong with the Pharisee being proud of all the good things he does to show his faithfulness to God. Haven't we been known to say or at least think the same kind of things ourselves? Hey, I give generously to my church and other worthy causes. It makes my heart, for instance, swell with joy when I put in my contributions for the food pantry and the second Sunday sharing cart is full. I'm glad that I can serve on committees and council, that I can volunteer and work hard for God. So if the Pharisee is telling the truth, that he's thankful, his life situation is better sometimes than that of others, and that he's glad he can do good things for God, what is the problem with his prayer? Jesus gives us a clear explanation at the end of the passage when he says that people who exalt or lift themselves up will be humble, and the people who are humble will be raised up. If we listen to the Pharisee's prayer with this lens in mind, we can hear what Jesus might find troubling about it. The problem with the Pharisee is his sense of pride. He's not just thankful that his life is relatively untroubled, and he's not just glad he can do good things for God. With self-satisfaction, he compares himself with other people and thinks he is better than they are. He looks on them and their problems with contempt rather than with compassion. To make things worse, he recounts all the good things he has done for God as if to say, look God, I've paid up, now you owe me. Worst of all, this prayer really is a monologue about himself rather than a true dialogue with God. Did you hear all the eyes in his prayer? I this, I that. The Pharisee doesn't turn to God to ask for help or forgiveness. He suggests that he has earned his way into God's good graces. He is the star of his own stage and screen. Maybe that stance toward God and other people works for him for the moment. But what will happen to the Pharisee when his life situation inevitably changes? What will happen when he can no longer claim to live a life that looks perfect on the outside? What will happen? If his health changes, for instance, and he can no longer fast, or his financial situation changes and he can no longer tithe, he's going to be in trouble because he has been depending on his own goodness rather than on the mercy and grace of God. He'll find himself left out of the world he himself has created, left out with empty hands, empty heart and a sense of defeat. Helium will have to come out of his pride-filled balloon. Haughtiness will have to come out of his swagger. His sense of entitlement and privilege will have to be deleted from the way he deals with God and others. We can see now why Jesus prefers the tax collector's simple prayer, Lord, have mercy on me. A sinner. It is a prayer that serves in all times and in all situations because none of us are perfect and all of us need God's mercy. Instead of pretending to ourselves, others, and to God that everything is perfect with us, we speak the truth and we ask for help when we say, Lord, have mercy on me. Center. Listen to some versions of the tax collector's prayer with me and see how it feels to pray as he prays. And if you like, you can beat yourself on the chest as he does whenever I say, Have mercy on me, a sinner. 
God, I am in a tight spot. The world pressures me to make questionable compromises. Have mercy on me, a sinner. God, I see a hurting world all around me, but sometimes I am so tired from all the calls for help that I can no longer feel or respond with compassion. Have mercy on me, a sinner. God, sometimes I look down on people who don't share my opinions. I judge them and make little effort to understand why they believe what I believe. Have mercy on me, a sinner. God, sometimes I close my ears to your voice. I do not want to hear your call because I think answering it will be too hard. I avoid you and what you hope for my life. So, I am without direction. Have mercy on me, a sinner. Now, understanding that both the Pharisee and the tax collectors are stereotypes, how does it feel to you to pray like the tax collector rather than the Pharisee? How does it feel to pour your heart out to God without pride or pretense, without covering things up or trying to make things look better than they really are? Jesus offers this good news in the parable. When we pray like the tax collectors, when we say, God have mercy on me, a sinner, we will not be cast down. God will lift us up instead. We don't have to live our lives continually looking over our shoulders, comparing ourselves, and competing with one another. What a relief. Instead, God lifts us up out of our self-centeredness into more respectful and caring relationships with each other, with ourselves, with God. We don't have to work so hard to prove ourselves or to earn God's respect. Instead, God lifts us up into the genuine self-respect that comes from knowing God loves us, regardless of what we do or don't do. We don't have to be perfect for God to listen to us or to love us. Whether our prayers are foolish and self-centered like the Pharisee's monologue, or heartfelt and honest like the prayer of the tax collector. God always wants to lift us up out of despair into hope. God always nudges and pushes us along. God wants to surround us with compassion and love. Let's stand for the hem of the day.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remember the following people in prayer this week. Janet and Robert G. Chris and Walter E. And Ethel W. Is there anyone else for whom we should be praying? Chris? Nancy? Nancy? Barbara? Mary Lou, Karen, Mary Lou, Karen and Steve. Peggy? Jean, Bob, and family. Jean, Bob, Bonnie, and family. Yes. Pat, Pat, Connie, Lucille, and Richard. Butch. And Butch. And who? Carol. Okay. Yes. Mary Jane and Jack. Mary Jane and Jack. Mark. Susan. Susan. Deb. Peter. Peter. Liz. Nancy and Jerry. Nancy and Jerry. A different Jerry. Fran. Fran. The Zimmerman family. Charlene, Rebecca, and S who? Loretta and Sally. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all creation. You are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Inspire your church to serve and love all people. With the unceasing grace you extend to us, God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all creation, you formed a world where even the sparrow finds a home. Preserve the beauty and diversity of all creatures with whom we share the earth. Lead us to protect all living things. God of grace. God of peace, you are an ever-present help in time of trouble. Rescue families and nations torn apart by violence and warfare, especially those in the Ukraine, especially during times of transition and regime change. Unite all people toward common goals of reconciliation and peace for every person. God of grace. Hear our prayer. God of hope, you stand with the suffering and give strength. Comfort your people filled with fear or anger, anxiety or shame. Bring healing to all who are sick in body, mind, and spirit. God of grace. Hear our prayer. God of restoration, you call us to trust in you and not ourselves alone. Make this congregation a community of humility and repentance, ready to encounter you in love and follow in your ways. God of grace. 
You have those who are unemployed, underemployed, or facing financial hardship, the support opportunities that they need. God of grace, hear our prayer. Bless our own feeding ministries and provide for the needs of those experiencing hunger and malnutrition, especially those suffering through famine in Somalia. God of grace, hear our prayer. Give safety and strength to the people of Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Honduras who have been affected by Tropical Storm Julia. God of grace, hear our prayer. Make us more aware of and committed to care for each other's needs during this breast cancer awareness, domestic violence awareness, and LGBTQ Heritage Month. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of eternal life, to you be glory forever. We give you thanks for all who have fought the good fight, finished the race, kept the faith, and now live with you. God of grace, hear our prayer. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We began last week thinking about God's abundance by becoming more and more generous ourselves. Last Sunday, Allison described the ways that her Aunt Bob inspired her to be a generous person. And now Chris Durheimer is going to come and tell us about his parents and the way he has been blessed by the generosity of our congregation. Hello, in case you don't know me, I'm Chris Durheimer. I've been a member of St. John's all my life. Ironically, the church was built in 1958, the same year that I was born. I grew up just three blocks away at 722 Front Street. I'm the youngest of six kids, and we used to walk up to church every Sunday for Sunday school and attended church as a family. My mom always made sure we had money in our envelopes for offering, whether it was a dime, quarter, or a dollar. My parents always instilled in us kids how important it was to give, and they gave abundantly. My parents were both very hard workers, and sometimes I don't know how they did it with eight mouths to feed, but they managed. As a matter of fact, they paid for one of the stained glass windows over there when the church was having a sponsorship program for them. My parents were both very involved in the church. My mother was involved in the clown ministry where they would get dressed up like clowns and go to visit members in nursing homes as well as our shut-ins. She was Toodles the Clown. My mom spread sunshine wherever she went. She was, uh, sorry. She was also very happy to bake and help host fellowship, which I also like to do, and bake for church dinners and bake sales, and man, could my mom bake. My father was involved in the men's group. They would meet on a Saturday morning, have Bible study, and take turns making breakfast. He loved that. I was baptized and confirmed here, and my siblings were confirmed here at St. John's as well. I even worked here as a sexton in my 20s. In my late 20s, early 30s, I stopped attending church here on a regular basis and attended a few other churches and became a C and E -er. In case you don't know what that means, it means attending church only at Christmas and Easter. I actually got what I called dismembered. I will never forget when I received a letter saying that I was no longer a member of St. John's. I was devastated. I love this church and I actually had to take membership classes to get back into my church family. This church has always been home to me. Also, my late partner, Phil, of 25 years, became a member as well, going from Catholicism to a member of our church. Not all churches accept the LBGTQ folks into their congregation. And thank you all and God for that. My grandson also was baptized here he attended Sunday school and church with his pop pop Phil and me. He was confirmed here as well. He was always amazed how giving our church always has been. Feeding the hungry with our ongoing food drive for the Whitehall Food Pantry, which I must say I really enjoy helping out at. Helping to distribute food to folks here in Whitehall that are so grateful for it that otherwise would go hungry. 
There are so many great things that we do as a church family to help others that are less fortunate. And it all works because of all of your generosity. My church family and faith have got me and all of you through so many tough times. May God continue to help and bless us all so that we may continue to do the good things that Christ wants us to do, to feed each other and the world in body, mind, and spirit. And now grateful for all the ways God has blessed us with food, shelter, and companionship. Grateful for those who have taught us how to share God's compassion and love for others. Let us bring our offerings to God as we sing together, 692, we are an offering. generously listens to all our prayers and he looks on our brokenness with compassion who forgives us and wants to make us whole receive our prayers today receive and bless our gifts of time service and financial support as well that they may abundantly increase our congregation's witness and service to the world amen, amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. 
The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those held in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, your advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share in this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in the world. Come, Spirit of Freedom, and let the Church say, Amen. Amen. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that, rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son, through him, with him, in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see.
God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, love, and hope. Amen. Thank you.